All right, so currently my comment section has been asking me for this since the start of the update. Tuning system, go-go. Listen, I need some help. Please walk me through it. Today, I'm going to go over everything that I've learned with this tuning system. I have known life for this for the past day or two, so I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe if possible. Just saying, just saying, you know? I don't know. Like all 700. I'm going high because I'm high after how much I've played this and, and done this. But I went through a lot of this over here, tested as much as I could, and wanted to learn exactly everything that uh, the system has to offer. I'm going to give you my TLDR, how I feel about the system, and everything. I am not going to be biased. I have played this game for one year. I'm still here somehow. Remember that. I'm not going to be biased. I'm going to tell you my honest take here. And uh, if you hate me for it, hate me for it. But we have a lot to go through. Full guide on the entire tuning system, the mistakes that I've learned that I want you not to make, and things we're going to go through regarding it entirely. Let's get into it. Like and subscribe. So let's start it like this. I'm going to try to break it down as best as possible very quickly, just like this. The tuning system is a brand spanking new system added in Season 8 of MHA Ultra Rumble. It is a system that incorporates the idea that you have skins and let's apply buffs to said skins. It also breaks down the idea that, hey, I'm a player who picked up PUR. Do I get a benefit for that? Yes, because you have PUR skins, extra buffs. Because you ordered the skin, extra buffs. But now, go, go, listen, I've never done that. I don't have aura. I'm not a whale. What do I do? You can actually use currency to acquire a aura to allow your character to have max buffs. So technically, they made a free-to-play part of it where you, any free-to-play, can obtain aura now because of currencies added in the game. Let's get into it. So that's the overall brief overview of it. You hop in. There is a character, like, let, let's go for a character I have more costumes for. I think it's Todoroki has the most costumes in the game for me. Um... Yeah, this is good enough. So, we're going to start over here with a common. A common skin will unlock what for me? If I go to tuning on a common skin, I have one, two, three. Three of these buff slots unlocked. Buff slots are basically this. For buff slot one, I can use any character data I obtain. Character data is obtained by playing matches and running into characters of that sort. Or again, just playing matches in general. Character data drops. And you have that ability to spend that data depending on where you want to. This is restricted, as you see, to red only. I can pick any red character and have fun with it. I cannot pick a character I don't own. For example, Present Mike is not owned. I can't use that. If I didn't have Strike Deku, I can't use that. If a player is starting the game off for the first time ever, half of the game is, uh, is locked to them, they'll never be able to use these characters until they unlock them. So again, red, red, purple. Any purple character, no actual limit or anything. I do not own All for One or Nedjure. Can't do much there. But again, for a base costume, I get three buffs and the main tuning slot. I can unlock more by paying key currency. We'll talk about that shortly. One, uh, five key currency per slot, and then it expands over here to a, be a better cost or a higher cost, because again, it's supposed to, because it's PUR. Over here is an SR. For an SR skin, which everyone is able to basically get, it's pretty, pretty easy, you have four slots versus three. Not much of an increase, but it's something. On a PUR skin, which again, you may have, you get five slots. Then unlocking over here if you have aura. The left side is base. If I have a PUR skin, it's five slots. Th uh, four is, again, SR. Three is R. That's how it operates. But if I have an aura, for example, you can check over there, right where it says uh, hero costume alpha version. I have one dupe of it, causing it to have an aura. Because I have that, I get one additional slot on the right side. Now, aura, 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 all the way down. I get all the auras. I max out the right side. That's how that operates. Again, you then have a main slot. This main slot is a bigger passive. We'll talk about that in a second, but that is simply how it operates with this system. I have a nice little special tuning. I use currency to acquire these things over here with character data. I put them in. I can then level them up. I can then unlock more slots with that. Again, why does the system get called pay to win? Because it incorporates the idea that I need PURs. It incorporates the idea that I need auras, or it incorporates the idea that I need to use hero souls to buy currency. Now, transition to the next topic, currency. How do I get them? Here you go. Hopping over here, this is what the shop looks like. They again responded to the degree of, hey, you want a Hero Souls usable? We got you. You can now pick up keys over here. You can now pick up tuning and slots, basically enhancers right here, PUR enhancers, and again, so on and so forth. Again, these two are discounted, so obviously if you need them first, pick them up. There's again a purchase limit of one, which is basically one slot. And then over here, it's a purchase limit of again 30, which is a decent amount of enhancing that is leveling up each slot you acquire, which we'll again, we'll get into, but these are the currencies. You can now obtain them in the Hero Souls menu, if you want to. Not only there, the Battle Pass has also added these things over here, where if you were to go through the pass, you can actually take a look at some of the currencies now added. Again, you get one over here at 25, which is five special Tony slot enhancement parts for, again, PUR outfits. You can also, I believe, pick up five more, or maybe I'm wrong. 
uh, maybe then keys. Yeah, keys. 50 more keys are now obtainable, again, in the entire battle pass. So 50 of these and five PUR training parts, which are pretty good. And yes, you can also pick up some currency now added in the official weekly tab for the game. You can now pick up some of the currency over here, which again is the base one. You can pick up the PUR one, 10 summons over here, or sorry, 10 keys over here. Again, 20, 10, 10, and then 10, 10, 10 of the uh, currency with additional 10 to 10 bunch of that currency <laughs> just lying here for again your level ups they also said that they updated it in other tabs as well which is over here you can now pick it up for the seasonal tabs getting the uh, highest rating 100 times over here KOing an opponent 50 times and then over here um, obtaining 500 item um, items in battle you can also pick up again the special tuning side part over here as well you can also pick up over here 250 and 50 become champion six times and that over there so those are all the ways now to pick it up via weekly and seasonal officially updated in game now and yes again take it a step further each again entire costume has a different set of things for example if you take a look at the bottom right there well, one of them offers blue which means any rapid character can give me one of their buffs or again on the right side if i unlock that side again by having full aura or by using keys you can again use your keys to unlock full aura which by the way also gives you the entire aura to your character basically making it where any whale out there who's whaled on auras pointless actually because again Use the keys to unlock a full aura, which is kind of cool, actually. But beyond that, that's how that operates. Again, each skill is locked by first typing and character skin. Each skin is different. So let's say I lock in over here on SR Rarity, nice UA Summer Form Bakugo. What does it look like when I try to level things up here? So it's not a PUR, so it only has four slots here. If I want to unlock the next slot, the only thing is it only costs five to do so. Again, not 50. When you get to the right side over here, it costs much uh, much more because the entire point is it's now giving you PUR. So that's where the thing comes into. But when it comes to buffs now, I can apply a major buff. A major buff is one of these ones over here. For example, the most talked about one is Codafinder. Basically speaking, if you own Strike Deco, you can unlock this skill over here on Bakugo being shows your, uh, basically, again, mini-map with Coda's face on it and where he's located. And you can fly to him and quickly retrieve Coda and his three freaking uh, skill-ups, which is insanity. Again, many characters have different things over here. More so, in my opinion, why I think it's a little pay to win is it shouldn't be that skill sets have such insane abilities because some of the skill sets really got some good stuff on there. Again, I would like to see it where, again, skill sets at some point get onto the character ticket or something, allowing this system to be better. The reason the system is dragged down is for the reason of, hey, can we try to make more skill sets available via other ways? Again, Red Deck has been here for how long in the game? Since season three. Five seasons later, you give a buff like this, you gotta allow players to obtain this. Again, it's been time, whatever, you gotta do it. So hopefully in the future, if they were to tackle that thing, this system becomes better. Yes, there is to a degree a pay to win element of it, but it's it's kind of fun at its core. It is cool, it is a great way for players to grind. This is giving incentive to grind and whatever, but it could have been handled a bit better. And if you say otherwise, you're probably wrong because it could have been handled much better. First off, it's a little overcomplicated, but it's still sort of a fun system, just again, way over complicated and a bit bit too heavy all right could have been much better on the aspects to a degree just to also show you an example when you are using a character like toga for example here there is actually a limited part of it where some uh, sometimes characters have the thing over here where it restricts you to actually put on only a hero versus a villain so for example here if i want to go and equip something i can only equip heroes if i want to go over here i can only equip technical heroes i cannot equip anything beyond that again this is a pur uh, costume if i want to go and unlock a new one over here it costs 50. so to fully unlock the right side i have to fully pur the character or use the unlock tickets again that is how that operates and these two over here are restricted this one restricted to villains this one restricted to heroes sometimes a character will have that restriction so verify before you spend or try to level it up Beyond that, also, you can now level up each one of these skills over here. So, for example, let's say on yellow, I picked, hey, for Toga, I definitely want some uh, some extra HP defense. I want that. Now, I will equip that. I can then level it up. As you see level one over there, I can use that currency in the top over there, uh, tuning slot enhancement part, the regular one. I can use this to level this up, and I gain additional additional stats just by doing that. I can then hop over to the top over here and level up this, which is, again, unlocking basically for the PUR part of it. This will use that currency given the battle pass. I think it costs 
per level up. I think it's again one, yeah, one per um, level up over here. And then again, I can level up this parts of it. So remember that it is restricted again by only yellows over here for the skin. Cause again, that's how the skin operates here. So for example, I definitely maybe want to pick up this increases your PU slash again, plus, uh, plus chaos or plus ultra gauge at the start of the battle level up to increase the charge up amount. So if I level this up over here, let's say I start off with 20%, I could then up it to 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on and so forth, however much I choose to level it up. If I level up the Red Deco one, I find Coda much faster than anybody else could because I leveled it up. This currency is going to come in handy. You cannot miss the battle pass. You cannot miss it in the shop. Make sure you all, all keep the currency handy. And this is where I want to get into the mistakes part of it because now we got the tuning system out the way. I think you should understand it now. So the reason I made this video was this mistakes section. Let's get into it. Let's hard push everything I have to say about it. So when it comes to making mistakes on this system, why I think they made it also overcomplicated is so players keep messing up and keep on reinvesting the currency. That's the entire point here. What I want to make sure is clear. Who do you main? Answer that question right now. You answered Nedjure. You're going to go and max out Nedjure and do the right skin. Pick everything you want for Nedjure. Do it that way. Pick a character you know you have PUR uh, cautions for. Pick a character you know you're going to play. Pick a character you know you're not going to just drop tomorrow, okay? This system is costy. It's going to cost you a lot of currency. And again, you basically get, let's say right now with this update, a bunch of uh, currency to maybe max out one or two characters. If that's the case, pick those characters properly. Commit to the character you like. Let's say I main full bullet. I commit to full bullet. Keep that in mind. This case, I'm going to say, let's say... Toga was who I committed to because it's the perfect example with the skins that I have. Let's go. I committed to Toga. I'm going to verify. I want to go PUR because, I again, I, I have the PUR. It's better for me. I can at least uh, sort of mitigate some of the cost of the, the keys. I can save them for unlocking the right side, which, again, it costs 50. It's going to get it's gonna get pricey on the right side here. But I don't have any dupes for her. I don't have any, again, aura. But I have the correct things that I want. I have the right major buffs over here. Make sure you verify the major buffs before going in. Verify that, yes, I am allowed to put on Heroes Coda Finder, because that's what I want. I'm allowed to put on um, Booming uh, Plus Ultra Voice, because that's what I have. Make sure to verify those things before doing anything. So in this case, Special Tuning Skill, I want to put on All Might. Correct. Check that in my brain. I want to put on Coda Finder. I now start to proceed to upgrade my character. I will again put all of the things that I want. Make the right decision right away because you do not receive back, as it says right there, any of the cost you put in. Okay? You choose. I put this in. I hate this thing. I should not have put it in. Make sure to put the right thing in before you do anything. They don't refund you the cost once you swap. Keep that in mind. Again, this character has one yellow, one blue, one uh, purple, one red, one purple. All these things do different things. Verify each, again, one of them. Make sure everything is correct before investing in the character. You only got one or two of these to make as of right now, unless you've wailed out on in the game and have a bunch of hero souls just lying around. But commit, do it that way. Don't just full send a character that has max PUR on you. Don't do that. Make sure that character that has max PUR has the correct major buffs and has what you want regarding playing the character. Don't commit to a character you don't plan on playing because, again, it's a very pricey system. I want to make that clear. When it comes to that, then choose to level up properly. Level up the buff that you think is more important. Level up, let's say, again, Coda Finder is the number one. Level that up first because, again, it's going to help you obviously do better in each match and that PUR currency is not an easy currency to get. Make sure you use it correctly. I think, it's, I think it costs one per level up over here if again if i wanted to go over here with all my it starts off 20 30 40 50 percent and increases how much pur or you know, plus ultra gauge i start off with just like that a very powerful ability so pick the proper ones go for a good ability lock that in pick the right things over here let's say i'm going straight hp defense i'm going dash speed pick the right ones start leveling them up properly and do it that way once you lock five unlock five over here get your main skill activated and then keep going after that Okay, that's how I would operate it. I would only start at PUR skins, in my opinion, because again, it lowers the cost of the keys. But if you if you only have rare skins or SR skins, don't let that stop you. Go ahead, use them. It's fine. Just know that your cost, again, for key currency is up by 510. Not much, yes, but every key counts at the end of the day. But just make sure you pick the right skin that has the right buffs and has everything you're looking for. If it has to be an R skin, let it be an R skin. Who cares, correct? We had a bunch of free skins that were SRs that were from battle passes. So again, just check back on your account there. And again, make sure before going in and, and, and building the character, make sure you have the correct buffs. Don't think like, I can use freaking, you know, red Deku, beautiful buff over here, Coda Finder. No, you can't. You don't have the skill set. Make sure that's also a thing you check off your list there. But uh, currency, very limited. Verify the skin before going, hand, uh, going in and going ham. 
verify the character, verify again <laughs> the currency you're using and which skill you're choosing to level up, put the correct buffs in. If you have to swap a buff out, not the end of the world, but you did waste a bunch of currency doing that. Verify all those things, have a checklist in front of you before going ham and enjoying the system. But it is pretty cool. Again, I'll give you my final thoughts here and end the video. Is the system bad? Is it gonna kill Ultra Rumble? In my opinion, it won't kill Ultra Rumble. Yes, it's overcomplicated, so players are going to be scared of using it ever. Players are going to have an initial uh, look through on it, being like, oh, it's fully pay to win. In my opinion, it's overly complicated. That's the biggest issue. Yes, it could have been handled better. It should have been a little bit easier with the skin and, and everything. It should have just been base character buffs. It should not have this whole, whole skin aspect of it. It should have just been the base character, levels up and whatnot, and that's it. Yes, the only issue is obtaining characters and skill sets. That's very hard for newer players. Obviously, you know, some of the skill sets have the better buffs because they know they're the hardest to obtain. They made it pay to win for a purpose. Again, not saying it's fully pay to win, but I am saying they made sure the best buffs are on skill sets. They knew what they were doing with that one because again, they're gonna make the most money from skill sets because they have the best stuff. And as said, they're the hardest to obtain. So it's very smart how they handle things here. But that's not saying that standard characters like All Might they still have great, great buffs. They are usable, but they might might not compete with characters uh, elsewhere. But again, people ask me, like, what are the best buffs? We'll talk about them in the future. But um, there are some great ones. And again, I'll go through, deep dive all of those and uh, give you my opinion there. But hopefully this video helped you. Please let me know down below what you think about the system. And if this did help you, just leave a like and uh, comment down below. So sorry for a long video here, but I wanted to make sure I got every point, And I think I did. I think.